There it is. Little money sign for a lending money chat. What I thought I'd share with you today, those of you that are first time listeners to the show, I am a mortgage expert for my full time career. I just hang out here on the weekends to uh, uh, do radio and talk mortgages and bring in experts in studio. But what I wanted to break it down, break down for you today is the difference between coming in with additional cash for down payment versus coming in with additional cash to buy down your interest rate. So if you've got options, most importantly is to look at all of the options that are available for you when you've got funds to work with to make sure you're making the best financial decision. Now, there's not a right strategy. You have to ask yourself a question, a few questions first to see what's going to make most sense for you. One, how much additional money are we talking about? Second, what is the percentage difference in down payment? Next, how long do you plan on keeping the loan? And the last question is, will the difference in down payment affect maximum loan limits? Four simple questions, understanding or knowing the answer to those questions will determine the best strategy for you on using additional funds that you have for down payment versus using additional funds to buy down the interest rate. So let's start out with additional money example in buying down the interest rate. So if you are if you have just a few thousand dollars to work with, it always has a bigger impact if it's just based on that alone and not the other things we talked about in utilizing that money for a buy down of interest rate versus down payment. Let's look at a $300,000 loan. I'm not quoting interest rates today. Interest rates are going to vary depending on what the uh, the market's trading at and also on qualifying factors. But for example purposes only, let's say a 30-year fix was running at three and a, four and a quarter. Three and a quarter. We used to saw three and a quarter, not anymore. We're going to see five and a quarter and six and a quarter if you don't act quickly. But whole nother topic. Four and a quarter percent interest rate on a principal and interest loan, three hundred thousand dollar loan amount, it'd be fourteen seventy five just rounding that. So if you paid a point, which would be three thousand dollars based on a three hundred thousand dollar loan amount, you could actually get a quarter percent better interest rate at a four percent interest rate. So the principal and interest would drop down to fourteen thirty, rounding those numbers. So you're gonna save forty five dollars a month between a four and a quarter and a four percent interest rate on a three hundred thousand dollar loan, costing three thousand. So the extra three thousand dollars in down payment would only save you $15 a month. So if you had the same four and a quarter percent rate and you didn't buy it down, you're having $15 a month savings versus a 45. So the spread is $30 a month. So to answer your question in this scenario, the better option would be to buy down the interest rate rather than putting it towards the down payment. And if you actually use that $30 to apply towards principal, it's going to knock off maybe 11 month in, months in the term of your loan. Even a bigger benefit is just your buying potential because the biggest challenge out there for buyers, it doesn't matter if you're first time, second time, or buying your dream home. Everybody has an objective and a payment, and it doesn't quite match up with what your target price is. So buying potential is key. This will give you another $5,000 in buying potential if you strategize correctly with what you want to do with your money. Now, the second factor to look at, which would change this answer, would be your down payment. So if the additional cash that you have is going to take you from a 3.5% down payment up to a 5% down payment, you will want to utilize it for a down payment, not to buy down the the interest rate. The reason why is because the impact in payment is going to be substantially more because it's going to put you in a position to where you can utilize conventional financing versus utilizing FHA financing. Huge difference is your mortgage insurance. So the cost of mortgage insurance monthly is going to be dramatically more expensive on a on an FHA loan. Actually, it's one hundred and twenty dollars a month on a three hundred thousand dollar loan. Also, unconventional, you can release that mortgage insurance based on future appreciation in your property. Whereas FHA, that mortgage insurance. That's $120 a month higher for the life of the loan. So really important to look at what your options are so you're not making the wrong financial decision. A third factor to look at is how long you're planning on holding the loan. If you're not going to hold the loan for at least five years, buying down the interest rate is not going to be the best option. Go ahead and apply it towards down payment, even though the payment's going to be a little bit less and a difference, just because you're not having enough time to recover that money. So you've got to look at the amortization schedule and see what you where your break-even point is. The last difference is to take in consideration is what it's going to do for your loan amount. So there's different maximum loan limits that are going to allow better interest rates and better qualifying factors. So if you're able to keep your loan within conforming limits by putting that money towards the down payment, 
that's going to be the best option rather than not doing that and having to go into a, a non-conforming or a jumbo product. So again, what's most important for me is to to be able to educate you and give you a little bit of teasers because you can't get all of this information, especially without a visual and in a five-minute segment on my money chat. But hopefully it sparks some interest and some questions that you have. And most important, what I hope that you get out of it is just knowing that there's a lot of different options to choose from. It's just understanding that you want to analyze those. And the numbers don't lie. They, it's really nice to see them side by side so you can see what makes most financial decisions for you. And coming up next on the Money Hour, here to discuss with me today's real estate market, Paul Fennell and Daniel Renee with Flux Real Estate right here on 1150 AM KKNW after this short break. 